everybody. I know I am looking just a little bit disheveled, quite frankly. This is one of the intros I forgot to film, and I'm currently getting ready for VidCon, and we'll be leaving in like two days. So excuse the mess. Here's my little baby buddy. He's getting ready. He's going to LA too. Today's soap was nothing short of a disaster. <laughs> a disaster while saved was not incredibly fun to do. <laughs> it still made soap. We still got bars out of it, but it went so blooming fast. I've probably never worked with a soap that I was able to save that moved as fast as this beer soap did. People have been asking me to make a beer soap for months and months, nay years, and I finally got around to it. I've never made one in a batch this big before, and that's probably one of the reasons why it moved a little quicker. Anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's make some soap. Now the first thing I did for this soap was, oddly enough, not mixing up the lye water solution it was to boil down the different beers so I put them both together I put them on my kitchen stove and I boiled them for 30 minutes and that's gonna take out the carbonation of the beer because if you leave it all carbonated whenever you make soap with it it's just gonna bubble up and out of your container it makes sort of a soap volcano and that is no fun to work with it is definitely not helpful and if you are able to salvage it you're gonna still end up with some really ugly bars another method that you could use is just to sit it out on the counter and leave it there for two two or three days that will obviously let it go flat as well but it's a lot quicker to boil it you do need to account for shrinkage when you boil it though you will lose some of your liquid so with my beer blend boiled down and ready to go I am going to strain my lye water solution because this was requested by you guys you're like I've seen other soap makers do it but you don't so I'm gonna do it for you guys I bought stainless steel you have to use stainless steel mesh strainers to do this you can't use aluminum because the lye will eat it up and using my brand new pink stick blender this is from Amazon it is cheaper than the ones from Cuisinart and I actually like it better I'm gonna blend this up until light trace I've gone into a very light trace and I forgot to mention that my lye water solution is at a 50-50. So with the percentages that you have down below, you're actually gonna mix up however much lye you have. I think it's about 32 ounces. I only added 32 ounces of water. And then the difference I made up in the beer percentage. To the beer, before I add it in, I'm gonna add a little bit of kaolin clay, a lot of it actually. This is gonna add some slip to the soap. It's gonna make it really smooth. Lots of people who make shaving soaps like to add kale into it and then I'm gonna blend that up on low just to make sure that it's fully dissolved and incorporated And then I'm going to pour my beer into my soap down my stick blender. Once again, this is the extra liquid that I took out and it's mixed up with the kaolin. So we're just adding it a little bit later in the soap making process. This will also help our soap not accelerate really fast. I blended this for a little while and now I'm simply gonna mix the rest in by hand. It is getting a little bit warmer because beer is really sugar heavy. And now I'm gonna split this off into two separate containers. My containers are a little bit stained but it's not going to affect the finished soap product. Gonna scrapey scrapey my big containy. This batch is going to be black and this batch I'm not going to color at all because this is really similar to the color of the Bass Pale Ale and to it I'm going to add my fragrance oil and with our fragrance oil all blended in it is now time to pour this first half into our large slab mold. After this quick commercial break. All right, I'm gonna dump this pretty quick in here because it is definitely accelerating. I'm having to work lickety split to get it all in here. Lucky for me, the middle is actually textured so it doesn't have to be flat, which is good for this soap because it wouldn't be even if I wanted it to. Gonna get all that into the corners, make it kind of wiggly up on here. This soap is definitely gonna gel, which is actually helpful because it's gonna make sure that that the 
the soap is a little bit harder whenever we go to cut it. So uh, this is me mixing up the second layer. I don't think I have worked with a fragrance that accelerated quite this quickly. Um, and of course, this is also mainly because of the beer in the soap. And I haven't done a fragrance that was like this and a soap that looked like this in probably four years. But lucky for me, once I had the fragrance oil in, it actually slowed down a little bit. So I was able to get all that black oxide mixed in really well. So there shouldn't be any soap that's uncolored. I'm just going to have to glop it on top. So as I am spooning this black on top of the tan, so there's a couple of things that this particular drink is called and half and half is one of them. And I think that's the preferred name for it. And when the drink is poured, they pour the pale ale on the bottom and then you can pour the Guinness in such a way that it actually sits on top of the pale ale in a glass. I learned about this drink in high school um, for our world history. We had to pick a country. The country I chose was Ireland and one of the weeks we had to write a long term paper on the food of that country and a half and half was something I kept coming across in all of my research that this was something that the Irish people serve in their pubs and such. It does have historical significance to it as well. I've been wanting to make a beer soap for a really long time so I figured that drink month would be the perfect time to do it. And just a note because you guys have seen me use a fragrance oil now and an additive that really really speed up how fast your soap is moving. If you have this happen to you don't lose your head keep working just work a little bit quicker and chances are you will still be able to save that batch. And if not, you can always rebatch it. There's some people that like to melt down soaps that they think are kind of ugly or maybe the color didn't get just right. They can melt it down in your crock pot, get it all smooth again like a paste and then remold it. I've scrapey scrapied my big containing now and we've tapped this down on the ground a second time just to try to get any of the absolute air bubbles <laughs> that are going to be in there. So when I do this next time, I will simply get two slab molds. I will make one batch of soap and then pour it into the containers to make the first half and then I'll make another batch of soap, mix in the black oxide to the oils and then just pour that onto the next batch. So it, it'll be a lot easier to manage. All right, so just making sure that every bar is gonna have roughly the same amount and then I can go in and texture that top the way I want it. So using this clear acrylic rod, I am just going to start swirling the top. We're not going for any particular design really we're just going for texture and this is a really great thing to do once again if you have a soap that is kind of setting up a little bit fast it's gonna look like the, you did that on purpose <laughs> it's gonna look uh, very uniform whenever you swirl the top and then you can clean up those edges it's really not that big a deal especially if you know how to work with it and with practice you will absolutely get better and better and better I remember whenever I was making my first batches of soap and they were all always, always accelerating because I didn't know it, but I was blending too long. <laughs> and then I just got good at working with a soap that moved exceptionally fast. And then of course, once I figured out I was blending too long, I didn't have to worry about it, but I got good right at the very beginning. And that has been a very helpful tool throughout my soap making journey. So don't stress it if it happens to you, just work with it and you'll be fine. So after I've textured the top, just like so, I'll go in in any little places that I might've created a hole with the air because it pulled a little too much, I'll clean those up. And then with my 91% rubbing alcohol, I'm gonna spritz the top very liberally because I do want it to stay black. Because this doesn't have any glitter on top, if it turns an ashy shade and it you know, gets a little soda ash on there, I may go ahead and rinse it underneath the sink before we take it to get it split by our slab splitter. And that's it, our half and half soap is complete. So this is what the soap looks like up close. You can see it has already absorbed the rubbing alcohol and the rest of it has evaporated. So it's starting to look a little bit more matte black and all the little swirls on top are being even more pronounced. So we're gonna wait 18 to 24 hours and then we will come back, split the slab into loaves and cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break.
I think the moral of the story is, if you feel you won't succeed, keep doing the soap anyway. <laughs> because upon splitting, it doesn't look that bad. Now, future batches aren't gonna have little bits of uncolored soap in them, and it's all gonna be evenly distributed because I'm gonna change the way I do them. But for the first time round and for my first time working with alcohol, I'm pretty pleased, I'm pretty pleased. And you can see around the edge here, the browning that's happening, that's from the fragrance oil, and eventually this entire soap will go that brown. It'll probably take up to two weeks to make that happen though. So I've lined it up here with Evangeline. She's the one that we're keeping in our studio. I'm gonna press down gently, make sure we're getting a nice even cut. I'll take one out of the middle. So here's what they look like on the inside. There's some teeny tiny bits that haven't been colored completely. And now that I've done it once, I know how to improve my technique. But I really like the texture of these. They've got a really like almost thick texture. I know they're gonna bubble a whole bunch. The smell is really fantastic. I think a lot of different people are gonna like this smell. It's the same one that I used for the Sherlock Holmes soap years ago. I will go ahead and link that in the upper right hand corner now if you want to see that one. Let's cut another one just for funsies. Looks like this loaf is a little more mixed up. There aren't as many uncolored spots in it. I think sometimes beer soap gets a bad rap because lots of people in the soap community kind of think of it as a more rustic soap. A lot of them tend to be pretty uneven because they do get hot really quick. So a lot of the bars that I see, well, again, they just look a little more rustic, but I think it can definitely be something that you use to make really beautiful, elegant bars. It does not always have to be a very masculine sort of like woodcutter vibe. You can do a lot with it. So the question of the day is how far would you be willing to travel for your favorite drink? And it doesn't have to be an alcoholic beverage. It could be your favorite lemonade, maybe even your favorite soda. I want to know how far are you willing to travel because Caleb drove over 90 minutes <laughs> to get to the place that sold this Bass Pale Ale that I used in this soap. It is not carried in many places in Texas because it's a foreign import from England. So you can't get it a lot of places. And I was like, Caleb, I want that particular brand. It has to be authentic. I want that and I want Guinness and I need both of them. And he's like, then I will drive for you. So how far are you willing to drive? Are you willing to drive over 90 minutes for your favorite drink? Let me know by clicking the I in the upper right hand corner. By the way, my favorite drink is not Bass Pale Ale. I just needed it for this soap. <laughs> hey, okay. So it sat for a while now and it looks quite a bit better than it did when I first cut them and so much better than when I first made them. It smells divine. Like this fragrance really, really gets better with age. It's like a fine wine or beer. So if you are interested in seeing more videos that are hopefully slightly better planned than this one, you can subscribe. You can click the like button, leave us a comment down below and hey, you can follow us on Instagram. We're gonna be at VidCon in the next couple of days. We're definitely gonna be posting. Might be doing some vlogging. We're gonna be present on the internet. All the little poppy divvy thingies are gonna be over here somewhere. I don't know where they're getting put in, but they'll be there. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that is getting your favorite beverage, be it alcoholic or non, depending on how old you are and what country you're in. So many disclaimers for such a short little commandment of do something fun for yourself. Drink your favorite drink. It'll be a good time or hold your favorite baby. <laughs> this is my current favorite baby. Lily doesn't count as a baby anymore. She's a toddler. I know. You want to give us a smile? <laughs> yeah, I have to decide whether or not to smile there. <laughs> and I will see you guys for the next video. Bye for now. And look what I can do now. <laughs>